Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Europe's crisis states should fight back with a debtor's cartel. EU warns violence creates more obstacles. European Union hits Russia with first WTO dispute over car levy. The worst is still to come for EU job crisis. Plus, connected TV. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the UNIT Nightly News. First, from our homepage, public debt levels are rocketing in almost every country of the Eurozone periphery. Debt ratios are already crossing the point of no return in Portugal and Italy and are nearing the danger zone in Ireland. The latest figures from Eurostat are shocking even to those who never believed that combined fiscal and monetary contraction made worse by bank curbs could have any other result than a faster rise in debt trajectories. Portugal's debt has just blown through the upper limits set by the EU IMF Troika, reaching 127.2% of GDP in the first quarter of 2013. It would be easy at this point to start gloating and saying, we told you so, but the issues and consequences here are so dire for the people whose countries and lives are being ripped apart by our balmy buffoons in Brussels, it actually makes me feel rather sad. There is a Native American Indian saying by one of their chiefs who was describing the attitudes of Western settlers. Only when the white man has cut down all the trees, laid bare the land and poisoned all the rivers, will he realise that you cannot eat money. The European Union has expressed grave concern about the killing of the Bahrain policeman, saying that violence only creates more obstacles to long-term solutions. Posting its stance on Twitter, the Union of European Countries said that it noted with grave concern the twin blasts leaving one policeman dead and three injured in Bahrain over the weekend. The European Union wants more calls on all parties to bridge the gap between communities and to work towards genuine national reconciliation in Bahrain. The Union said a solution to the current difficulties in Bahrain can only be found through constructive dialogue. Well, isn't this interesting? Our high priestess, the Baroness, is out blowing taxpayers' cash in Bahrain, and this news suddenly takes centre stage. Yet mainstream media continues to ignore the daily protests in Spain, Greece, Portugal, Ireland and Italy. There is nothing like fair and even-handed reporting. The European Union will launch the first trade dispute against Russia at the World Trade Organization later on Tuesday, challenging Moscow's car recycling levy, diplomats said. We gave Russia until July 1st to lift these recycling fees and it failed to do so, so that is why we are taking this to the World Trade Organization. Hopefully this can be resolved quickly. It is important that Russia, as a WTO member, plays by global trade rules, an EU diplomat said. The dispute comes less than a year after Russia signed up to the global trade rules and follows repeated warnings from Brussels about non-compliance. Japan and the United States are set to join the EU at the WTO meeting on Thursday to air concerns about Russia's failure to stick to the rules. One in two people feel the worst is still to come for the job crisis in the European Union, according to a survey released by the European Commission today. Only 36% of people surveyed thought the job crisis had reached its peak, while 55% saw further turmoil ahead, according to the Eurobarometer, which surveyed 36,694 EU citizens. Well, only time will tell, but looking at the latest economic data coming and the proposals either for economic surgery or fiscal butchery, which of course depends on your point of view, the autumn looks like we're in for a difficult close to 2013. The report begins by stating with some concern the fact that Audiovisual Media Services Directive, Directive 2010-13-EU, is not up to date given the ongoing technological conversion of television and the internet. 
This may lead to unequal competitive conditions and unacceptable discrepancies in the protection of users. Such hybrid receiving systems allow users to browse indiscriminately between TV channels and the Internet, including websites which illegally offer audio-visual content. Aspects that warrant regulation, as per regulation objectives of the directive, include protecting children, ensuring diversity of opinion and of the media, accessibility for the visual and hearing impaired, safeguarding fair competition, and quality and content-based regulation of advertising. Now, for those of you who are concerned over net neutrality, this proposal for amendment to the directive needs to be watched very carefully. I have already briefed our researchers to follow this and keep us up to speed. There is a real risk here of this being leveraged in conjunction with other regulations in respect of digital rights that could restrict freedom and the use of the internet. We'll keep you posted. Today in our video library, the European Union has agreed to add the armed wing of Hezbollah to its terrorism blacklist, a move driven by concerns over the Lebanese militant group's involvement in a deadly bus bombing in Bulgaria and the Syrian war. The powerful Lebanese Shiite movement, an ally of Iran, has attracted concern in Europe and around the world in recent months for its role in sending thousands of fighters to support Syrian President Bashir al-Assad's government, an intervention that has turned the tide of Syria's two-year-old civil war. Britain and the Netherlands have not long pressed their EU peers to impose sanctions on the Shiite Muslim group, citing evidence it was behind an attack in the coastal Bulgarian city of Burgas a year ago that killed five Israelis and their driver. Uh, whilst Mr Netanyahu preaches the gospel according to Israel, let's not forget whose jets have been bombing Syria without UN mandate. And as we reported earlier this week, the EU has banned funding for Israeli development due to its Palestinian occupation issues. Is this not the pot calling the kettle black, perhaps? I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>